So the first decision I had to make was where to situate my door and how wide the door is. What influenced my decision to go for a four feet wide door is because I needed to be able to carry my wheelbarrow into my greenhouse to carry out maintenance work. And the width of the wheelbarrow is about three and a half to trip on something fit. So I decided to just approximate it to four feet. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Michael from Xenax Snail Farm. Here we talk about snail farming and ways to bring innovation to snail farming in Africa. I received a message from a subscriber of mine yesterday and he said he wants to commence construction of his greenhouse in March of this year. However, he would like to have a copy of my blueprint so that he would know how to go about outlining his walkway, the modules and computing the quantity of galvanized iron pipes he needs to build the roofing frame of the greenhouse. Now if he is requesting this information, I would imagine that a couple of other people would also benefit from having this information. So I decided to put it out here in this video. However, in order for this video not to be too long, I decided to cut it into two parts. Other parts may follow depending on subscriber requests, but for now it's just two parts. This first part will focus on how to situate the modules and the outline for the greenhouse. The second part of this video will then work on how to go about calculating the quantity of galvanized iron pipes you need to construct the roofing frame of the greenhouse. Here I have my board. Let's draw an outline of my greenhouse. For those of you that have not watched my video on a tour of my greenhouse, it's about 50 feet wide and 100 feet long. So the first decision I had to make was where to situate my door and how wide the door is. What influenced my decision to go for a four feet wide door is because I needed to be able to carry my wheelbarrow into my greenhouse to carry out maintenance work. And the width of the wheelbarrow is about three and a half to trip on something fit. So I decided to just approximate it to four feet. So I have my four feet door here. This is 50 feet. This is 100 feet. When you walk into my greenhouse, I wanted a situation where I walk directly onto a walkway, as opposed to when I open the door, I will hit a module where plants are. I would rather open the door into a walkway straight. So that means this entire thing would be a walkway. In addition to this, I wanted walkways around the edges of the greenhouse. So to do that, we remove four feet from here. We remove four feet from there and then we go full circle okay yeah now I also wanted to have a walkway in the middle to increase accessibility this okay now once we have this let's see the dimensions of this preliminary module and walkway here we have four feet four feet here four feet here this 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 and then this four feet there four feet there
Now here we have 444, 12 feet. Now if we subtract 12 feet from 50 feet, we have 38 feet to share between these two modules. So that means here is 19 and here is 19. That is the length of this. Likewise, 444, 12 feet. If we subtract 12 feet from 100 feet, we have 88 feet to share between these two large modules. So here we have 44 feet here and 44 feet here. Now, let's look at these initial size modules from a practical perspective. We want a situation where, imagine if you're planting stuff, you don't want to be walking inside these modules when you have plants there or when you have um, snails in there because snails lay their eggs in the soil. So you don't want to be walking on the soil and mistakenly cracking some of those eggs or walking on the soil and hindering some of the plants from growing. This is why we have the walkway so that we don't have to walk in there. So when you're on the walkway, it's very important that you can access every single part of this module. Now, if you outstretch your arm, it measures about two and a half to three feet. That means that if I'm here, I can access three feet all the way of this module. Likewise, if I'm on this side, I can access three feet inwards from here. I can access about 13 feet of space in here and that tells me that this module is too large okay it's not practical so that means that i have to split it up further by adding a walkway in the middle since this 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 are all the same i have to apply the same for all of them so let's add a walkway okay and then we enclose it. We do the same here. Okay. Now, once we have this, remember, the walkway is four feet. The walkway is four feet. Now, if we have four feet of walkway here, and the entire length of this was 19, if we subtract four from 19, that means we have 15 feet to share between these two modules. 15 divided by two is 7.5 feet. So that means the dimension of this module is 7.5 7 .5 in width by 45 feet in length. And they are all the same. So 7.5, 7.5. Similar to all of them. And now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 modules with walkways surrounding them i hope this has been clear if you have any questions regarding this just let me know in the comment section now let's touch on the reason why i went for a raised bed as opposed to a flat module like you see in other greenhouses this is because like i mentioned in my previous video on a tour of my greenhouse when i was constructing this i had my land was sloping which means I had to level it out so that when it rains, you don't have water accumulating on the low point and then drowning any snails that might be there. So where do I get the soil required to level out this? Coincidentally, I was also building a 20,000 gallons underground water reservoir and a lot of soil was dug up during that process. Unfortunately, most of that soil is clay. And as we all know, clay doesn't support plant growth. This means that after using clay to level out this entire greenhouse foundation, I had to then construct um, a raised bed module. So raised two coaches above the ground and then subsequently fill those modules with quality topsoil, loamy soil, so that the plants that I will plant in there would have rich soil to enable 
excellent growth and also loamy soil for the snails. This is the reason why I use the raised bed. If you have a good quality soil on your land, I don't think you have the need to do a raised bed. Bear in mind that when you do a raised bed, you are elevating the height of those plants, which means that you need to raise the height of your roof. Because sometimes after constructing your greenhouse and you go to purchase um, plantain, maybe dwarf plantain or dwarf banana plant or dwarf purple to plant in there, sometimes those women or men will sell you um, the giant ones, the ones that are not so dwarfish in nature. And when they grow fully or mature, they will tend to break apart the top of your net, the top of your, the roof of your greenhouse net. So it's important that you have enough headroom in there. If you go for a raised bed, that means you need to also raise the height of your greenhouse. But if you go for a flat bed, then you may not necessarily have to raise the height of your greenhouse. In part two of this video, we will calculate how to know the quantity of galvanized iron pipes you need to construct the roofing frame of this greenhouse and also the ideal height I used for my own greenhouse. I hope you found this information useful. If you did, please kindly like, share and most importantly subscribe to let me know I'm doing the right thing.